from very nice, very evil alliances splitting the fan base to the lesser of two evils still not satisfying the entirety of the WWE universe. The word divisive doesn't even begin to cover it. I'm Gareth from What Culture Wrestling, and here are 10 wrestling moments that live fans loved but the internet hated. Number 10. Dan Lambert's American Top Team Go to War with the Inner Circle Introducing some outside world star power to the mix isn't anything new when it comes to the business of pro wrestling. So it wasn't too difficult to see why Tony Khan was quite happy to extend an offer to self-professed wrestling superfan Dan Lambert and the rest of his American Top Team to come join the AW machine for a spell in the summer of 2021. Yet few non-impact fans expected Lambert to take to the promo waters as quickly and effectively as he did. Upon tearing down the promotion that had rolled the red carpet out for him and the likes of Jorge Masvidal and Amanda Nunes. That being said, Lambert's brilliance on the microphone soon caught the attention of Le Champion, and the bloom quickly came off this particular rose. Lazy attempts to generate heat in the form of crapping on hometowns and peeling back the curtain from Lambert were met with equally tragic, edgy efforts from Chris Jericho and his pals, taking aim at Paige Van Zandt's OnlyFans side hustle being a particularly low-hanging piece of fruit. But while the internet cringed, a surprising amount of the live All Elite face lapped it up, and Lambert has been a mainstay ever since. Number 9. Cody's American Nightmare in the comments Some freakishly dedicated to the AEW cause have struggled to come to terms with the American Nightmare's defection. As Cody himself would note whilst talking on the After the Bell podcast, a number of particularly heartbroken All Elite supporters were so riled up about his decision to go back to the place he started his pro wrestling journey that they actually took to genuinely burning his old AEW t-shirts on social media. Going further on the matter, the one-time TNT champion would add, I thought it was odd because AEW doesn't exist without me. There are other people that need to be there for it to exist, sure, but I'm one of the people where AEW exists partially because of me. For there to be that strong of a reaction, damn. I saw the term sold out and thought, you have this, it's great. Despite this surreal backlash from some corners of the internet, there's no arguing with the fact that Rhodes was presented like an all-out star at WrestleMania 38, and the accompanying live reaction made for one of the most jaw-dropping occurrences in recent WWE history. Number 8. The Beast Enters the Rumble Already somewhat soured on the back of a Universal Championship damp squib, a cheap finish to the colossal WWE title showdown, and a bizarrely booked women's titular over-the-top rope spectacular, a strong finish to the Dome's seemingly stacked card was definitely required in order to keep the first stadium show of 2022 from being branded as an all-out dud. Instead of the unleashing of a jaw-dropping name from behind the forbidden door in a similar fashion to Knockout's champion Mickey James, or one of the medically cleared loudmouths on the commentary desk to erupt both the internet and live crowd though, Vinnie Mac went back to his beastly well. With Brock Lesnar dropping his WWE title earlier in the night, it felt almost inevitable that the former UFC heavyweight champion would pulverize the field at some point, en route to getting his hands on the Tribal Chief at Mania 38. And while those inside of the stadium lost their minds upon hearing those unmistakable Lesnar tones ring out at number 30, folks tapping away from the comfort of their own homes were less than impressed by this telegraphed and already stale path to Reigns Lesnar 3 on the grandest stage. Number 7. Hulk Hogan Returns WWE's increasingly frequent recent trips to Saudi Arabia have made for an uncomfortable watch for anyone with even a small knowledge of the details behind Vince's association with the KSA. But if that wasn't enough, the company themselves have seemingly gone out of their way to add more fuel to the controversial fire over the years, by either booking over-the-hill legends to almost kill each other in front of the easily pleased fans in attendance, or laughing in the face of the internet in general by having Shane O'Mac become your undisputed best in the world. Yet, easily ranking as the most egregious green light to have been given ahead of a Saudi show to date, the return of once blacklisted icon Hulk Hogan at Crown Jewel in 2018 resulted in an entirely new way of understandable online criticism being sent the sports entertainment giant's way. Those inside of King Saud University Stadium evidently couldn't have given a toss about Hogan's checkered past, however, or were blinded by nostalgia, as has also been the case stateside as they were seen hanging on his every trademark word and thoroughly indulging the racist, disgraced Hulkster. Number 6. Hornswoggle is a McMahon Spending weeks narrowing down who among the WWE roster would be taking up the mantle of illegitimate McMahon going forward, there was actually a moment in time when it appeared as though this Jerry Springer-esque soap opera could have had some compelling legs. 
A planned match between Triple H and Mr. Kennedy was the apparent desired destination, with the latter being revealed as the ween and setting the stage for a McMahon civil war of sorts. Yet a wellness policy violation for Kennedy would bin off those plans in the end, paving the way for the big reveal of Vince's boy, who had a fondness for gold and playing the game, being none other than Hornswoggle on the September 10, 2007 edition of Raw. Needless to say, those occupying the internet at the time and watching on at home were less than impressed. Yet the unexpectedly noisy live reaction to WWE's resident little bastard popping up from under the ring suggested the boss may have actually been onto something. He wasn't, of course, and the whole thing would be swept under the carpet before long. Number 5. Tamina Soars at WrestleMania 37 The unexpectedly electric response to a veteran finally getting her big moment in the Mania Sun unfortunately invited a push that was never fully thought out. Go figure. And while the lucky few finally allowed back into a stadium to watch a wrestling show for the first time in an age, we're all too happy to get behind Natalia and Tamina in particular. Over the course of both nights of Mania 37, the online response to their performances wasn't quite as kind. Along with many feeling as though another team within the Tag Team Turmoil Showcase should have been given the spotlight on the grandest stage, the underwhelming, clunky interactions between Tamina and Nia Jax and the bones of the eventual women's tag team title match in general being somewhat weak, left a sour taste in the mouths of most of those watching on outside of Raymond James Stadium. A women's tag team title run would follow on the back of this reception, but the pair would ultimately be split in the 2021 draft as WWE and the returning live fans lost interest in the once celebrated twosome. Must have been fun while it lasted though, right? Number 4. Hulk Hogan circa 1999 to 2000 Despite TV ratings and pay-per-view buys declining throughout 1999 to 2000, Eric Bischoff continually insisted on keeping his golden NWO poster boy front and center when it came to the WCW main event scene and television time in general. And it wasn't too difficult to see why the mind behind WCW was insistent on trusting in the Hulkster either. With the live TV taping crowd and house show audiences both routinely erupting at the sight of the iconic personality. Yeah, ratings were undeniably on the drop, and early internet responses were less than positive towards the product throughout this period. New stars were clearly required in order to keep a flailing product fresh and compelling for a fan base who were having their heads turned by a particularly enthralling spell for Vinnie Mac and his Attitude Era Brigade. Sadly, despite calls from the likes of Dave Meltzer for him to refrain from listening to said in-the-flesh responses to the Hulkster, Bischoff was adamant that Hogan remained the key to their rating slump. Number 3. Hookhausen Becomes a Thing In Hook, AEW has one of the most exciting youngsters currently honing their craft within the wrestling industry. With that in mind, the increasing likelihood of the cold-hearted handsome devil inevitably joining forces with the Merchant of Curses Danhausen over the last few weeks had many online worrying about what damage this odd couple feud slash partnership would do to the Team Taz star's unmatched aura. Despite these warranted concerns though, the AEW capacity crowds have welcomed the unlikely Hookhausen pairing with open arms over the course of the duo's recent interactions together inside of a squared circle. Hell, the moment Hook finally decided to back up the freshly squashed goober on Dynamite recently and subsequently made their team official rival just about any other noise produced inside of an AEW building. Seriously, it was blue bloody loud. It's still maybe too early to sum up whether this is the wisest move for all parties involved, but blending Hook's silent intensity with Danhausen's routinely nutty shenanigans could help add yet another dimension to both of these cult sensations in the coming months. Number 2. Randy Orton eliminates the big dog en route to a Rumble win Whilst he may be currently enjoying arguably his most popular spell to date inside of a wrestling ring, Randy Orton hasn't always found himself at the top of the majority of fans' list of names they like to see towards the top of the card. Whether due to simply being overutilized in that position over the course of his impressive two-decade-long WWE career, or the Viper's frequent indifference towards the material he's given to work with. By the time the 2017 Royal Rumble came around, Orton was viewed as little more than a body that could be used to help get over the next generation, or Bray Wyatt in this case. And perhaps that's what made his eventual victory inside of the Alamo Dome such a surprisingly well-received development within the 52,000 fan-boasting arena itself. Either that or the fact that Orton dumped out then almost universally rejected company face Roman Reigns to seal the deal. Away from the live pop, however, the online contingents were less than impressed. Despite rumors of the likes of Kenny Omega or a returning Finn Balor shaking up the landscape, a demoralizing double whammy of a big dog number 30 spot, and the apex predator being the lesser of two evils cemented this as yet another deeply underwhelming rumble. How they managed to consistently cock up this pay-per-view is alarming. Number one, the best in the world falls to the great one. On paper, having one of the biggest stars in the history of the business, Lockhorns, 
Reigns with the internet's most beloved darling over the WWE Championship, no less, looked like a recipe for success. But said endgame for this eventual clashing of generations was always destined to divide. Casual fans the world over simply could not hide their joy at witnessing The Rock finally reclaim WWE's top strap on his way to defending it against the face that runs the place in a Mania rematch. And that positive response was very much shared by those watching on inside of Arizona's US Airways Center. But those who refused to turn their backs on the voice of the voiceless, despite WWE's attempts to maintain his position as the most despised man in the company, were having none of it. Reddit and Twitter was a buzz with calls for CM Punk to be rewarded the Mania main event spot he'd more than earned over the prior year or so. Yet the inevitable sight of Rocky and Cena winning the big ones on the night looked to all but depressing and confirm a fate that would ultimately nudge the best in the world out the sports entertainment door. So in a way, we have The Rock to thank for CM Punk becoming All Elite. Yeah, think of that. And that's our list. Know of any other wrestling moments that live fans loved but the internet hated? Let us know all about them in the comment section right down below and do not forget to like, share and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, if this kind of thing is your bag, then head on over to whatculture.com and find some more awesome articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on and you know what? I'd know this because I wrote it. I have have been Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Thank you as always for clicking on this video today, and I'm sure I'll see your lovely faces very, very soon. Bye bye.